Hello everyone, Snowlap337 here, and today we're going to be wiring a locomotive with RLC Platinum. Yes, I know I've already done a video like this, but I'm going to redo it, because I guess that video is kind of old. About a year old, but whatever. Alright, let's, let's do this. Alright, so what you're going to need is you're going to need Magnum's Train Model Pack, and that is something you can get off the workshop, alright? So, what you're going to want to do is you're going to hold down Q, and you're going to go want to go into your spawn menu. And under your spawn tabs, there should be a tab that says Magnums, or Magtrain's Mall Pack, right? Now, click on this little plus, or you could double just double click it, and it'll do a drop down, and now go to Locomotives. And then you would pick a locomotive. We're going to use the GP7. So, you're going to want the front of your locomotive facing north. This way is north in this build shed. And if you're going to do this exactly the same as me, this is a build shed that is uh, on Sunset Gulch. It's underground. Um, if you've been on this map before, then you know what I'm talking about. So, you have the locomotive. Now what you want to do is we're going to need bogies. Now, if you're not very knowledgeable on locomotives or anything like that, you just kind of want to get into this stuff and you're fairly new, uh, I suggest you look at a picture. Go on Google EMD GP7 locomotive. And then you'll find a picture, a reference picture. Reference, pre reference pictures are your best friend. Alright? And then, and then you will know which bogies you need to use. So, you'll go into your spawn menu in miscellaneous. And then you will go to locomotive trucks. Don't use any of these. These aren't for locomotives. These are for freight cars or passengers. So, um, for a GP unit, we will be using the Blumberg because these are the uh, these are the bogies that they use. All right. And then a the thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to precision alignment, or actually we'll do the easy way first. Go to axes. Or precision and then use the axis in there. The only difference between precision axes and axes is uh, default Gary's mod axis, it leaves a tiny gap between the item that you placed on the other prop. So as you can see here, there is a tiny gap. But, oh wait, and it also doesn't uh, move, well it moves it, but um, you can't undo the move. So let's spawn that back in. And with the precision axes, you it's basically the same thing. Also, this snap grid is from the precision tool, this thing. And then you will want to line up the points, the cross on that one, and then the cross with this one. Get that perfectly. And then instead of just clicking and being done, then you have to click again. And then it'd be fully placed. And with this one, it just doesn't leave a gap. But, I used to th do that until I realized how it's not as good as it, uh, as using ball socket. Uh, to be more specific, uh, precision alignment ball socket. So, um, if you know how to use precision alignment, great. If you don't, then listen carefully. This will be just kind of a quick run rundown. Uh, precision alignment is used for placing props that are very, very precise. More precise than using precision. Precision, precision is great and all, you, you'll end up using that some, but precision alignment will be your best friend. So, what you're going to want to do, you're going to click on precision alignment, and then you will click on hit pose, uh, hit position, alright? And you will right click, and that will select the entity that you want to do stuff with. Now, and now what you will do is that you will go to the entity that you want this entity to move to, you will first click there, you will first click on the entity you want to move, you'll click on the exact position that you want the blue entity to move to, like so, and now you will hold uh, you will hold shift and you could press E and that'll smart, that'll snap to uh, one of the uh, points on the grid, and shift, and then you will hold down, yeah, make sure you hold down shift and then click, because if you don't hold down shift and you click then it'll just move that point over here, and you don't want that to happen. 
So now that you have both points selected, you'll hold down Q again. Actually, no. Yes, you will hold. No. Now, since you have both points selected, you will hold down Q. You will click Move Entity. After you have done that, you will now press R, and now a menu should pop up. Go to Constraints. Go to Ball Socket Advanced. Now, these are my settings I use for um, applying bogies onto a locomotive. So for the uh, X min minimum, negative uh, 15, X max, positive 15, and then the Y minimal and the Y max is zero, and Z minimal is negative 55, Z max is positive 45. And the X, Y, and Z friction, just leave those alone. Uh, you don't have to select no collide, but if you don't disable the collisions on the main body, uh, just keep that like that. So we're just, so just going to keep that like that, because that's how I do it. And then you're going to click point 1 and point 2. And that's showing how it's going to attach. And then click Create Constraint. If you exit out, then you, know, you can just right-click anywhere else, and that will get rid of the blue. And now, if you unfreeze the bogey, you will see how it rotates. Kind of like it rotates like an actual locomotive buggy. But that is the more advanced way. Like I said, you could use axes. Now we're going to do that with the rear bogey, except I'm not going to explain it. Alright, so now I've applied my bogies. Now, this locomotive, uh, we have the basic base and wheels down. Now, if you put it down on the ground, it should, you know, it should be able to move fairly decent. And if you lift it up, there we go, yeah, there, the, move, the wheels, the bogies, they move like that. Now, uh, once you, a very important tip on uh, building is that you want to make sure that everything is at a 45 degree angle. Stuff like this, if it's off angle, that's bad. Uh, I don't, this isn't because I have OCD or anything. I'm just saying if you don't have, um, if you don't have everything at a 45 degree angle, uh, it, it'll be bad. And okay, you know, maybe I might have a little bit of OCD, but uh, if you don't have, if you don't have this at a 45 degree angle and you put something on, you, it's just going to look bad. And you don't want things to look bad. So you will go to precision and then you'll go to apply. Then I get have freeze target selected and then click auto align to world nearest 45 degrees. Then you'll select your main prop, select your bogey, select both the bogeys like that. Done. That's everything's at a 45 degree angle. So nothing will be nothing will be off uh, angled, I guess. Everything will be at a 45 degree angle. So now what you're gonna want to go to now what you're gonna want to do is this is where we get into the E2 stuff. Go to wire, and I have the you get you're gonna need expression too. I have that in my favorites. I have all the stuff that you're gonna need in expression or in my favorites. So uh, take a quick look at this. Uh, search for it in your wire tab, and then add it to your favorites. All right. So here we go. Go to expression 2 and then if you don't already have mags pack uh, this is what's going to have all the E2s in it um, press uh, the key that you use to go into console I forget what the keys name is but um, it's under the escape key and you will press that and then type in update underscore mags pack also um, unlike last video you don't have to be on it uh, FCN and I am on Alexon train build on the number one server and this is the update max pack has been applied to all of the Alexon servers so uh, you know you could either join Alexon or uh, FCN and do that um, there is no download link or anything like that um, for the max pack uh, I don't I don't know why but 
I'm sure people have their reasons. But anyways, you go into Lexon, uh, console key, uh, update mags pack, boom. Now you go, when you hold down Q again, and click update, and then a full file called mags pack, underscore mags pack, underscore should uh, appear. Then what you're gonna want to go, what you're gonna want to do is go to PT beta. This is gonna have all your ETs in it. Auto, shabam. All of your stuff that you're gonna need to know. All right. So a lot of these ETs are meant for specific things. These are all uh, mostly EMD prime movers of the locomotives. So you have your 567 prime movers and variants of it, and your 645s, all that stuff. Um, if you don't know which prime mover to use. Um, go, there is a very handy tool, or not really a tool, but it's a website, or just go to Google, and then you will type in, like, something, GP7, we'll type in GP7, a GP7 locomotive specs. I guess specifications, and you, you have either Wikipedia or this website. The they have the data sheets. This is the website I normally go to because it has a lot of everything. So uh, the prime mover for a just a normal GP7 and GP7B is the 567B 16-cylinder engine. All right. So once you figure out what prime mover you're going to use, select it. And let me just skill this actually. Yoink. Yoink. Now what you're gonna want to do is you will have the E2. It'll look something like this. Wait. There we go. Just had to wait for the E2 to load in. The E2 will look like that. And if you hover over it, it'll tell you everything. I'll see platinum EMD five sixty seven C. Uh sure it says S D nine, but you know, this is a, a GP nine. And if you need to fine tune the E2, just right click on it, open, and then um, if the horsepower or uh, uh, tractive effort's wrong, or any of this stuff is wrong, just go to, just go find the specifications of the locomotive you're building. In this case, the GP7 had 1500 horsepower. Alright, so once you've figured out what prime mover you're going to use, in this case we're using the 567, select it, and then you can either put it on the back of your bogey, which is what I normally do, or you can use precision alignment and precision alignment it into the center of your locomotive. Some people do that, I don't really do that. Um, and I've seen some people put it on the cab, just as long as this white part right here is facing the rear of the locomotive. So I'm going to put it on the bogey. Uh, it doesn't really matter if it's on that side or if it's right there. I put it in the center just for simplicity. All right. So since this is meant for an SD9, it doesn't have the correct amount of horsepower, so we're not to edit it. Now, once you've figured out the amount of horsepower that a GP7 will have, you will you can go into the E2 by right clicking, hovering over the E2, and then right clicking. And then you will it'll look like this. Uh, don't be scared. I know this is a lot of text and code and stuff, but just don't mess with any of that. Uh, this also just kind of tells you what you can do, you know, uh, start up all that stuff. Set up, yeah. So scroll down, and there will be horsepower, uh, tractive effort, all that stuff. Just uh, change it. Uh, we'll change this to 1500 because that's what the SD7 had. EM or not SD7, uh, GP7. Sorry, uh, GP7. Uh, we can just leave that how it is. Just get rid of the seats there. 567. And that depends if you want your locomotive to have dynamics or not for your simplicity, whatever. But just as a basic locomotive, we're gonna get well. Hmm. Let's just keep dynamics, because whatever dynamics are useful. Electronic traction control. Uh, older locomotives didn't have it. Newer locomotives have it. Air brakes. 
Um, it explains about that down there. Gearing ratio. That might be. That'd be. Like, like it over, says over here, the standard. Uh, 62, 15 gearing ratio is standard for freight locomotives, freight gearing. Alright. So, when you go down and head in power, all that stuff, you can you can find all that stuff out uh, yourself. But, a thing that you might want to change, if you, for some reason, uh, just feel like this control setup isn't normal for you, you can change it. I'm just going to leave it default because that's how I use it. And that's how a lot of people use it. So once you've made your changes, you will click Upload and Exit, and everything you just changed will be saved in the ETO. All right, now you want to go back, hold down Q again, and now we're going to want a pod controller. Let's spawn this right there. We're going to need a pod controller, advanced entity marker, and... That's it for right now. The advanced entity marker, you're going to right click the advanced entity marker, right click the front bogey, right click the advanced entity marker again, and right click the rear bogey. If you're building a locomotive that has more than two bogeys, just whatever locomotive you have, just select all the bogeys with this. Anything that's going to be used to propel it. Alright. And then you're going to want to get the wire tool. Then you're going to then you're going to want to hover over the RLC Platinum E2 with the wire tool. Scroll down to Trucks Array, and then go over to the Advanced Pod Controller or Advanced Wire Entity Marker. Sorry, and there, that's done. All right, and then you want to go back to it again. You want to get the Pod Entity and link that to the Pod Controller. Like so. Then, now what we're going to need is a seat. So, go to vehicles, and you can use chairs like these, but uh, Magnum has made seats for his locomotives. Locomotives. So, this is a seat that would be in like a GP7, hopefully. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter. Some people are very nitpicky about that, but, uh, you know, you do you. And now we're going to need a control stand. Alright, so once you find RLC Platinum Control Stand, right click it, open it, and then it should look like this, and then go down to the control stand that you need. We have the GPU 7 one right here. Undo the hashtag, just backspace, delete it, then click save and exit, and here you go. We have a GP7 control stand for our EMD GP7. Now, what we'll do is we'll put that in the cab. Go to tools. I'm just going to use precision. We'll use move. All this stuff. All right. Um. All right. So let's just select some part. This doesn't have to be exact. I don't know anybody who really cares if it's exact. And then just put it and place it in the cab, and then. Move it around to where you think it fits. I'd say right here is good enough. If you really care, um, you can look up pictures of the inside. Take that back. That does not look good enough. I'm going to look up a picture. Alright, so I have found a picture of an EMD GP7 cab. That looks close like the one we have. <laughs> Sorry, I sneezed. Ugh. All right, so we'll look at the picture, and then we will realize that we need to put the control stand somewhere else. So I'm just gonna adjust this with my fizz gun. Uh, don't listen to what people tell you if you're using your fizz gun; that's uh, bad. Uh, you know, just ignore them. Do you? And let's put that right. I'd say there there looks good. Good enough.
All right. So now we have the control stand in place. Now what we're going to do? Oh, whoops! I delayed my seat. Work seat. There we go. Here we have our seat. Um, a handy tool that you can do. It's not really a tool. It's just a, a button on your keyboard. Just hold down C and right click an entity, and then you can select stuff on it and change things. You want to give this armrest there. And you want the mount tab, we're going to do bolted because it's going to be attached to the floor. Get out the precision tool again. There's a nice little thing on the bottom there showing you where to select it. Take it. Uh, that doesn't look quite right. It's a little bit too far forward. Press R and that shall move it back a few uh, notches. And there. That is your seat, and it's, in, and it's in place. Good enough. So, now what we're going to do with the pod controller that we placed down earlier, we're going to right-click the pod controller, come back up here, and right-click the sink, the seat. And uh, I should say what it says in the bottom right, how it's linked to the seat. And now that's you need to do that in order to operate the locomotive. Once you send that seat, uh, the pod controller will go from red, it'll go to green. Yes, so that means it's linked. Now what you're going to want to go to do do is go to wire, and then you're going to want to wire RLC Platinum Entity to the RLC Platinum E2. Now let's that's 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 good. That's good. All right. So now we're going to need buttons. You can use any buttons you want. Uh, anything. It really doesn't matter. For this, we're just going to use... Do we have a start button? Alright, uh, we're going to use Muffin to start our locomotive. Oh yeah, they have a start button. There we go. Okay, we're going to use the start button to start our locomotive. We're going to use the Muffin button for the MU switch. And I'll show you what MU, the MU switch is. Also, a thing to note for the start button is make sure the toggle thing, the toggle checkbox is unticked. So just, and if you spawn it in with toggle check, just unclick that and then just click the button again. There. So what toggle means is that you have to constantly hold it down with your uh, activate key. And uh, with with it with the toggle on, it'll be like this. Just tap it, boom, boom. All right. So now we're gonna go. Want to go back to the wire tool? I'm gonna wire MU master on the control stand to the button you set for the MU. Which let's do that, and then we go to MU master on the pod controller, or not the pod controller, the E2. Set, set that to that button. And Go down, we'll never up. There we go, the start. Why that start on the start button? So, uh, I'm pretty sure this is something everybody wants to know. Uh, this is the most important part. Once you hit start, it starts. Like so. And you click it again, it turns off. Right, so that's that's basic. Now we are going to need to wire. We're gonna need if you want to link up multiple units, we're gonna need to use the plug. Uh, these are all my settings for the plug. Now you can use any kind of plug you want. Doesn't matter. I'm gonna use the USB. A lot of people use this one, um, but I just like to use, use the USB one because it's small. But you know, for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going to use the big ball plug thingy. All right, so we'll place one on the front, and now we will place one on the back, like that. All 
right? Now I'll go to wire tool, click in array, and then go down to the E2 and then click front plug out. And click front plug in, and then click the plug again. Or go back to the RLC Platinum E2 and then click rear plug in, and boom, boom. Back there with the NRA selected, and go to rear plug out. There. Alright, now that should be it. Right now it should function. Uh, the thing you should do is go to your advanced duplicator and make sure to save uh, a dupe while you're working because you never know when the server crashes. crash. If you're playing on Lexon, the chances of the server crashing are very slim. So I suggest playing on Lexon. <laughs> now you will want to spawn in your locomotive. Never use the main, uh, the main, uh, your first version, always use a secondary, and what's going on up here with these things. Alright, um, if you want to edit the locomotive in any way, hold down C like I showed you with the chair, go to uh, detail, and select whatever you like. For some reason, all this is selected, I have no, re I have no idea why. But, you can change the all the details, the the body groups. So this is GP7. The detail dynamics. We have GP7 dynamics, so we'll put those on. And the nose. Uh, we could do chop nose, or we could do a high hood. Doesn't really matter. Just this is all looks. So we're gonna do chop nose. Fuel tank standard. Torpedo tubes, we're going to do none. Those are the things on the top. And that should be good. Alright, so. Um, that uh, that all should be good right there. Select it. And use advanced duplicator. All you do is you hold down shift. A giant green box should pop up. But to change the size of that green box, there's this little slider. The bigger thing, slide it up more, the smaller, slide it down. Alright, now, and then shift, big green box, and then just make sure what you want to do is select it in the green, and then just right click again. And then spawn something, just left click. It's there, it's completely spawned in. I forgot, we need to parent. Alright, basics of parenting. Um, okay, parenting is very useful, it gets rid of constraints and all kinds of unnecessary stuff, and just makes your locomotives better in every way. So, what you're going to want to do is you're going to go to wire, and then you're going to go to gates, and then it doesn't matter, just pick a gate, addition, anything. Scroll down, uh, you don't have to click no collide, uh, let's do parent. Okay, so when you click parent, it just automatically selects no collide. Alright, select whichever model, I don't know why this is in there, that's the error in there, yeah, alright. So, select whichever model, let's use this one, just put it on the bottom of your locomotive, or just somewhere where nobody can see it, or where everyone can see it, whatever you want to do, and we're not going to wire anything to it, we're going to get the multi-parent tool. Now, with a low prop thing like this, you can just go around select each entity like so or you hold down shift select everything and then unselect the props and how you how you unselect is you just right click the props that are green the green props mean they're going to be parented and you don't want to parent e2s pod controllers and i think advanced the uh, wire entity marker i think those are all right to parent but don't parent um Stuff like your bogies, because those are going to be touching the ground. Don't paint the body, because that's what the bogies are attached to. Um, seats. Don't parent buttons to gates. Uh, that just messes up the buttons. So make sure you have the buttons unselected. 
Also, yes, there's an auto select radius for a multi parent. Make sure you have remove constraints checked. Don't have any of this other stuff checked. Uh, maybe you could have disable shadows, set weight, but none of this stuff. Just, you really don't need it. Just remove constraints is the only thing you need to have set. Alright, so make sure you just have the stuff that you needed select. You need the parented selected. And unselect the unnecessary stuff. Go down to your gate. Make sure your gate isn't selected in green, and then just right click the gate. Now, uh, let's take this stupid. Spawn it in again. Now, when I unfreeze this, of course the brakes are going to be uh, applied so the wheels aren't going to want to uh, glide around and stuff. And everything will be attached, it'll be a part of the model, everything normal. Also, with the buttons, uh, go to your multi-parent and then just select the buttons and then just right click the body. Don't click the gate, just right click the body and the buttons will function normally. Alright, so, time to do a test drive. Hit start, and then hit the MU master, get in your seat, and now all the info you need will be on the control stand if you look at it. Um, there are details, but I have another video for that, and I actually might remake that video. But, look at the control stand, all the stuff, up in that little box, everything you need to know. Ops, all that stuff, well, you don't really need to know that, but just the reverser, throttle, dynamics, um, emergence, the, the uh, brake pressure, all that stuff, it shows you, yeah, your speed. So, to release the brakes, you hold down shift and just press S. Just press S twice. Now, we're gonna set the reverser, this thing right here. We're gonna set that. There is one thing I forgot. I'll explain that later. And you're gonna press W. Or if the reverse is gonna go into forward, or you could press S and you'd go backwards. This is neutral, forward, reverse. And press D. We're notch one. Ground forward. Faster and faster and faster. Faster. And if you're on Lexon, there's this command. If you jump out of your locomotive, type back seat. Back in your seat. Alright, so let's say uh, you can't stop for some. Press uh, shift the right hand shift on your keyboard sets the emergency brakes everything goes to neutral emergency all that stuff your locomotive is completely stopped alright so the thing I forgot is if you have lights and uh, stuff like that which um, I guess I'll go over the necessities um, you will do lights and stuff thing you're gonna need to do go down to wire and then wire the pod controller like this look at the pod controller Go to, where is it, allow buttons, click that, click the pod controller again, scroll down to where it says active, select active, and then go up to where it says crosshairs, and then do the same thing. So now when you sit in your seat, you have a crosshair, and you will also be able to select buttons. So now we have buttons. Put the buttons wherever you want. I'll just put the buttons. Oh, this is parented. You can't put anything on parented stuff. If it's parented to a gate, you can change the color and the material, but that's about it. So, parenting is the last thing you want to do. So, right now, I'm just going to unparent it. There's a multi unparent tool. We really only need, really need to unparent the control stand. That's it. Go back to wire, and then we're going to go to buttons. And then we're going to put our buttons on. Uh, make sure you have toggle selected. The values don't really matter. Just make sure you have off value is uh, zero. Alright, so it's toggled. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to go to lamp. And just take a lamp, put it 
on the front of your locomotive, like this. Well, that's a very crude way of doing it, but it works. You can parent these. But what I'm going to do is we're going to go to spawn list. I'm going to go to browse add-ons. We're going to scroll down to grow street G-Man stuff. Yes, all kinds of props that are meant to be used with Magnum's locomotives. He has his own, um, Grove Street G-Man has his own locomotives, but, uh, you can't really detail them because they are already detailed. Like this. So, I mean, if you want to use those, uh, there are, you know, you don't have to do any the detail your stuff, you just have to set up the basics. But, if you're doing custom, he has a mall pack for your custom locomotives. So we're gonna get a, a light board. Let's see here. Um, let's go. There we go. Tool tools. Precision. I have moves selected. Sorry if my voice is dying. I'm tired. It's late. But we're gonna. Put that on there like that. That's too low. Edge precision tool. Press R a couple times there it's centered. Now go back to wire, lamp. You can use lights if you want. I don't have lights in here. I don't. Lights aren't really important. You don't need to use those. Unless you're doing like s different stuff. Alright, so we will have a front light there. And a really cool trick to hide the light is you can either go down to color and then just take this, drag it all the way down, or you can go to material, and then select this one, and just select the light, boom, gone. But you're going to want to do that last before you parent. Alright, so there's going to be a light there, and we're going to spawn in this again. And we're gonna precision. Put that on the back. Wire, we're gonna spawn in a lamp again. Like that. You have your lamps. You're gonna wire the front lamp and wire it on to here. We're gonna wire on from that to here. And when you turn on this button the light turns on. Turn on this button, backlight turns on. You can turn on both buttons, both lights come on. See? Simple. Alright, so... There we go, we have the lights. Now, if you want to go into higher detail, all the E2s you're really going to need are in uh, Magnum spec. So, we're going to be in accessories, and then there's going to be a little file called GSG gauges. It's have all the air gauges. So since this is the that has air gauges, speed, load all all that stuff. So since this is an EMD, we're gonna do the EMD stuff. And then your freight and passenger speedometer, self-explanatory. This is a freight loco well, this is a general purpose unit, but it's not really equipped for passengers, so we're gonna use the freight speedometer. Alright? So I guess the freight speedometer would be it would be somewhere right here. We're going to put it right there. Let's do precision. There. That's good enough. Now we're going to go down here back to our gauges. These are your air. I'll make sure, yeah, just unselect uh, nearest auto line to world 45, nearest degree, uh, yeah, that. And just put the gauges on. Simple, easy. I'm sure, I know they're out of line, but whatever. Uh, 
a GP7 didn't have a odometer like that, or load meter, but we don't have the one that we need, so I'm just gonna do that. So, and now what you're gonna go do, is you're gonna go back to wire, get out your wire tool, break info array, just wire all that stuff to the pod controller. I mean the U2. You're gonna wire PH to MPH or KPH, and then you're just gonna have to like remember that the speedometer isn't MPH despite it saying it is, and it's KPH. But since this is US stuff, MPH. All right, and let's close this door. Um. So now those are all set up. Now we have the brake pressure and uh, what how much pressure we have, how much air we have to use. Uh, these gauges indicate that. This will indicate stuff when we turn it on. And this is your speed. Oops. Okay, so right now this is just, this is really basic. So, yeah, that's, that's about right. Now what we're going to want to do is go back to your tools, material, make the stuff you don't want to see invisible. Yeah, the multi-parent tool. You can go and select each thing individually, or you can just auto-select everything. Like this, you'd have to unselect everything again, but whatever. There we go. That should be good. Oh! Don't parent these. I messed up. And those should not be parented. Those have to stay welded. We're going to put those on again. Oops. Okay. Whoops. Um like doing everything wrong. There you go, rear front, trucks, shot, stuff is wired up. Alright. Things should be perfect. That's that should be that should be your basic. Okay then, um, right, let's pretend that, that didn't happen, and just uh, parent these to the body like it did before, hey, yeah, happy everybody, yeah. alright, that's good. I know I didn't take a dupe of it or anything, but this is just an example. Um, that should be about right. So, we're in the startup. Damn you. Get your seat. Now watch this. Watch the, when the air compressor goes on, uh, those needles should go up. Or this one, yes. Not even they'll stay on the control stand. At least it should. And the brakes are already applied. Now what you're gonna do is release the brakes. And shift. Double tapping S. There we go. Alright, now put your locomotive forward. 
and notch up. There, that's doing its thing. Down. And then to apply the locomotive brakes, you have Alt and Control, which apply that one. And release those by pressing Alt, double tapping it. With the reverse or in reverse. Then notch up again. Notch down. Brakes. Um dynamics you would normally just set those uh, you would I believe with the MDs you put your reverser into forward and now you uh, put the reverser into forward I think and then hold down shift and then just press W or no sorry press uh, like a press a and D press a to go down and then press D to notch up and that should, that's your dynamic handle, and you are helping with dynamics. And that winding noise, that's your dynamic brakes. Very useful for when you're going down hills and you don't want to use your, you're not really supposed to use your air brakes, so you use your dynamics. All right, so you've completed your locomotive and you know how to drive it and all that stuff. And now let's put some color on it. Uh, all that's for. Uh, let's go with the nice. lights. There. Okay. There we go. Yellow GP7. Let's take it out for a spin. Oops, forgot to release the brakes. Shame on me. Oops, the sound cut out. Now, if you're on Sunset Gulch and you're on a server, there are speed limits. You should follow those speed limits. Uh, keep your light on. Whoops. I derailed also. There. Uh, you turn your light on. Hopefully you're not derailed like me. I just smashed into a, uh... Oh. <laughs> just keep smashing into the stuff. Alright. Anyways. That's... I believe that's that. And you know what? If you've made it this far and you've learned how to build a locomotive, good on ya. And... I'll make this into a dupe. Alright. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I guess I'll see you in the next video, so bye. Alright, a thing I forgot was to show you guys how to use the MEO stuff. Alright, so, uh, now you have your locomotives end to end like this. So, freeze that. You'd go to wire. Actually, now first you go to tools. You go to rope. Go to my rope settings. One to the bogey to the other bogey on the other locomotive. The rope. The rope's invisible, but the rope. Just show you right here. Like so. Then go to wire. Plug. Right click there, and then right click there. Get a wire, just like that. Uh, make sure you're left clicking, left clicking, each one, and then race. It should be like that. Now you turn on both units, and now whichever unit you want to be your lead unit, you will click this button, whatever your MU master is, and then the reverser um, will show up in your control stand. If you don't have it selected, then the reverse is gone. And you won't be able to control that unit. So, now we're controlling both units. Like this one. Whoops. Just raise it. Okay, all the gauges are messed up, never mind. But, you are controlling both units, and if you listen carefully... 
Uh... You can hear them rev up. Like so. Alright, that's the end of this tutorial, and goodbye!